everyone, this is Jackie from Bronx Bobbles, and I'm back bringing you another exciting video. I was out for at least two months trying to get through COVID. It really took a number on me. 2022 was not good to me, but 2023 is going to be our year, and I'm so excited to bring you these fabulous video. This video is going to be on this book called Amber. The Natural Time Capsule by Andrew Ross. This is an incredible book and I'm gonna review it with you. So, let's just get this video started. So I am naturally a curious person and I have a zest for learning. And my passion happens to be vintage costume jewelry and jewelry history in general but I sometimes want to know specific details about certain aspects of jewelry and in this case it's on amber I didn't feel I knew enough about it so I purchased this book called amber the natural time capsule and let me tell you this book opened up a whole lot of information for me that I never even knew existed when it came to Amber. And I'm gonna share this information with you. Amber is such a hot, hot, hot jewelry item these days. It is so expensive, so sought after, highly collectible. And although I have several pieces, some of which are right here, of Amber and I have several other ones. Um, I didn't feel I knew enough about it. Um, and I didn't understand and I didn't appreciate what Amber was all about. So let me share with you some of the things that Amber is, that this book helped clarify for me. This book is not a jewelry book. This book is specifically about the semi-precious gem and this is considered a gem called Amber. There's several other natural gems the way amber is. There's pearls that are made naturally, coral that's made naturally, would be jet that's made naturally, and then there's amber. Um, I think also ivory um, is also considered, I don't think it's considered a gem, but it's definitely used a lot in jewelry. Um, and amber is not only used in jewelry, um, it's also used in tobacco pipes, little dice, trinket box. There was even a room constructed for the Tsar of Russia that was made entirely of amber. And I can imagine the fabulousness of that room. You can find amber in Africa, the Dominican Republic, even here in the United States. There's some places that you can find amber. Amber is also found in the Baltics. This book also not only explains where amber is found, but it also teaches you how to test for amber. And there's several different tests that you can do in order to test to see if your jewelry is real amber. There's the alcohol test, the scratch and sniff test, the dropping the amber in salt water and watch it float test. And also, there's the scratch tests. This book will explain in details how to do all those testings. And you have to be careful because you don't want to damage your pieces. Um, but you do want to know how to test for amber. And one of the quickest, easiest ways that people test for amber is by shredding little shards of paper and then rubbing your amber and watching the amber, you know, pull in those pieces of paper and attract it. And in fact, in a lot of ethnic cultures, the allure of amber had a lot to do with the fact that it attracted um, good spirits. But when you put it on your body, it warms up and it has a scent of pine. But most people love amber because of its beauty, its cognac color, it's such a warm, inviting uh, uh, gemstone. Um, these necklaces here are worth several hundred dollars each necklace. Um, and amber is not only in this cognac, uh, like um, brandy or apple juice colored um, gemstone. You could also find amber that is cl clear, 
um, green, and even cherry amber and dark, dark brown amber. You have to be very careful of the amber you purchase because there's a lot of fakes out there. And in fact, these earrings that are really good quality, they happen to be fake. Another aspect of amber is that it fluoresces under black light. And I don't know if you can see this well, but um, this amber has that green, green grayish hue on it. Um, and as you can see in these earrings, it's not glowing. So that's another way you can test for amber is this black, uh, black light. Um, but that's not a fail-proof test either. Sometimes you have to do several tests to make sure that your amber um, is real. Amber is super, super hot these days. So many people love it and so many people want it. And if you have amber, you want to hold on to it or you might want to release it and make some money. One of the most fascinating things that I learned about Amber that I really didn't appreciate till I read this book is that Amber is prehistoric. Amber is not a new material. In order for Amber to be considered Amber, it has to be millions of years old. I want you to really take that in a little bit because it's not 100 years old, it's not antique not vintage. Amber is prehistoric. And amber has been appreciated for as long as men have been in existence. They found amber in caves. Um, they've even found amber in Egyptian tombs. Um, because it has been revered for so long, uh, and, and understandably so. The book explains how amber is formed. And basically, Amber is the resin that comes out of a tree that's been hurt or damaged. So in essence, it's almost as if it's the blood of the tree. When a tree gets cut or when an animal attacks a tree or a little insect is burrowing into a tree, it, the mechanism inside the tree spews out amber and it covers the wound and cauterizes it. And it's almost as if it turns into the scab of a tree and then this tree falls in a forest and then millions of years it gets compressed and typically you find it under oceans of waters because the pressure of the water allows the amber to solidify it takes millions of years for it to be what is considered today as amber so that's a fascinating process amber is is surprisingly very light. It's very buoyant. So when you do the salt water test and you drop an amber that doesn't have metal on it in the water, it should float. When you wear amber, it's warm to the touch. Unlike other gemstones that's cold, amber remains warm. And another beautiful thing about amber is that it's relatively soft. So it's carvable, you can carve amber. In this case, you see different styles of amber on this necklace. There's these huge nuggets. Um, and then this is Baltic amber that basically is chipped right off. Uh, there's a specific name for this type of amber. One of the things that popularized amber, if you could believe it or not, is Jurassic Park where there was a specimen um, of an insect that was in, bedded in an amber, and they actually were able to extract the DNA and create all these amazing uh, prehistoric creatures in Jurassic Park. Well, that didn't happen, and that to this day cannot happen. However, it's a possibility in the future that that very well could happen. Not only is amber important to the jewelry world because of its beautiful aesthetics, it's equally or probably even more so important to the scientific world. And that is why amber was so important for scientists to learn about uh, the evolution of different animals and species and even viruses from amber. Now this book 
is, as I described earlier, more of a scientific book. And I know if you watched any of my previous videos, you will know that I say I love to look at books for its pictures. Well, this one is the total and complete opposite of that because the pictures in this book is downright disturbing. It's incredibly gross. There's, there's maybe a handful of pictures of beautiful amber pieces as far as it relates to jewelry and many, many pictures in regards to amber as it relates to insect and critter specimens. That's right. Th this book shows graphic pictures of creatures <laughs> embedded in amber. You'll see insects, you'll see creepy spider legs, you'll see ants and, and mosquitoes and bugs and flies and just, it's so creepy. Look at this, I think this is a, a mini scorpion looking animal. And this is a, a flea, oh gosh, this book <laughs> is not for the faint of heart. It's definitely not a book of, of beautiful aesthetics. This book is for you to learn about amber as, as it relates to science within jewelry. Books like these are just as important as those pretty picture books that I like to look at. So what Amber was able to do was encapsulate critters. Typically the critters happen to be these little tiny insects, little ants and fleas and bugs and caterpillars and things like that. Critters that have a hard time fighting and getting out of the goo when Amber comes out of the tree before it solidifies. Um, a lot of times um, you're not gonna see big specimens, although they have found really, really important specimens. They found um, a salamander as an example. They found uh, dinosaur feathers. And it, it, Amber was so critical to scientists because in the evolution of feathers as an example, there was thousands and thousands of years that the evolution had skipped over when it comes to the understanding of feathers. And it wasn't until they recently found a specimen of feathers stuck in amber that they were able to connect the two different um, generations and fill in the pieces of feather evolution. Um, and so that's why amber, what it does is it encapsulates the critter creature. Sometimes it's fauna. Sometimes it's, like I said, feathers. And sometimes it's viruses. They've even found amber that still had air pockets um, encapsulated with even water specimens. And scientists would like to study these things because it might teach us something about our past. Um, amber um, is an incredible time capsule. And if it wasn't for amber, scientists wouldn't know a lot of things that they know about uh, 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 evolution today. And they're learning more and more about it, including salamanders and different areas that they didn't realize salamanders were uh, inhabited. They've even found little tiny fleas. And when they did further research, they found underneath the uh, ant's uh, throat, actual bubonic plague virus. And so they thought basically that it was mice that spread it, the black plague. But now they're starting to do research on whether it perhaps started out with the little insects. So Amber was able to bridge the evolutionary gap between species. Um, and for scientists who study this stuff, it's extremely important. Because what they're doing now is they're taking amber, melting it down, uh, putting like scorpions and, and critters inside of it, and, uh, and then reconstituting it and selling it out there. Um, but that's not real amber. So amber, as it relates to vintage costume jewelry, is fascinating because it is a millions and of years old. So that's what you're wearing when you wear amber.
And if you have jewelry, sometimes, and some amber even have inclusion. So take a look at some of your amber and see if there's any inclusions. The specimen with the feathers was in a museum for decades until they realized that the specimen had a very important, um, uh, a very important inclusion that explained the evolution of feathers in prehistoric creatures. These books as a resource for you to learn about your jewelry. Like I said, this book is full of cre creepy, icky pictures, <laughs> things that maybe give me nightmares at night. But the information that it provided to me was so important because now I know a lot about Amber um, that I previously didn't know about. And I have a great appreciation for Amber, for its historical nature, for its scientific and for its natural beauty. Um, and that's why I love books like this. Um, as I said, I love my picture books, but these books in your library are just as important. And so hopefully in the future, I can do a video on my amber jewelry. So if you are interested in learning more about vintage costume jewelry, about gemstones about the history the ethnicity i want you to join me in my journey i have so many exciting things that i have planned and i'm going to be sharing it with you so if this is stuff that you like to to hear about and, and learn about don't forget to hit subscribe leave me a comment you guys i love 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 your comments and hit that like button and share me with some of your friends and join me join me my tribe of vintage custom jewelry lovers i love you guys and thank you so much with lots and lots of love mwah, mwah, mwah. bye